This video is about dynamic input. And the first thing I want to show you is if I'm not using dynamic input, let's say that I'm using relative polar coordinates to create a, say a five by five box. How would I do that? I'd start the line command, pick a point somewhere on screen, and then using the relative polar coordinates, I would put in the at symbol, and then the distance of the line, which would be five, then the angle symbol, and since I'm going straight to the right, that would be an angle of zero. So I'll press enter for that. And that gives me my first line. I now want to go up 90. So once more, I'll put in at 5 at an angle of 90. Then I want to go straight to the left 5. So once more, I've got at 5 and an angle of straight to the left is 180. So I'll put in 180. Then finally, to close this, close this out, of course, I could use the close option. But I'm going to put in at 5 an angle of 270. I could also put in at 5 and an angle of negative 90. And that creates my box. So let's see the same thing with dynamic input. With dynamic input, uh, first of all, to turn it on, you have the DYN button down here on your status bar. When you turn that on, things start looking a little different. First thing you'll notice is that you get some text next to your mouse. So not only does it tell me to specify my first point in my command line, it also shows me next to my mouse. So I'll go ahead and select my first point. And then now as I'm drawing, you can actually see that it indicates an angle and it indicates a length of the line. Uh, first thing I want to point out to you is do not trust that angle value. It is rounded off. Um, so we don't want to go with that value. But as you can see right now, it is highlighting the length of the line. So I'm going to change that length to 5. But instead of pressing Enter, I'm going to press the Tab key. When I press the tab key, I'm now locked onto a five inch long line, but I just have to tell AutoCAD which direction I want it to go. And I'll do that by simply putting in zero and enter. So to get the next line, I'll put in five and then tab over to the angle. 90 is straight up, so I'll type 90 and enter. And as you can see, that goes straight up. Then I'll put in five and tab and put in 180 to go straight to the left. That gives me the next line. So as you can see, the inputs are very similar, except instead of typing the at sign and the angle sign, I'm tabbing between these boxes. Here's where it gets a little different from what we've learned so far. Um, so far, we've learned that 0 is straight to the right, 90 is straight up, 180 to the left, and 270 is straight down, or we can call it negative 90. But notice it doesn't show you that in the little dynamic input there. It shows me this as a positive 90. So the way that dynamic input works is it counts from 0 to 180. So I'm going to put in my 5 and tab over to the angle box. If I put in just a regular 90 right now, since my mouse is above that horizontal line, it'll go straight up. If I move my mouse below the horizontal line, it'll go straight down. So I'll just simply type in 90 and hit enter. And again, you can see I created the same box by using the dynamic input this time instead of using the coordinates. Another important thing to take note of with the dynamic input is that by default when your dynamic is on, AutoCAD is using relative coordinates. So let me explain what I mean. Let me turn dynamic off first. And if I start with a line command and I put in 1 comma 1 and hit enter, it goes to the absolute coordinate of 1 comma 1. And if I want to go to the coordinate of, we'll say, uh, 3 comma 2, I can just type in 3 comma 2 and hit enter, and it goes to the absolute coordinate of 3 comma 2. So if I escape out of that and put in dynamic this time, and once more I'm just going to pick a point on screen, and then watch what happens when I type 3 comma 2 this time. Rather than jumping to that same point, AutoCAD actually puts the at sign in there for me, and it goes relative. So if dynamic is on, then you're automatically set to having relative coordinates, which could be a good thing if that's what you want to use. Um, if you don't want to use it, you've either got to put in the pound sign, so I can put in pound 3 comma 2 and hit enter. And now you can see it actually jumps to the absolute coordinate. So that's one way you can do it. Um, you can also, of course, just turn off the dynamic button as well, and that will take care of that for you also.